Radiant team picked. A lot of Diffuso carriers gone, so that yeah, they will put the Earthshaker in the three. Uh, potentially the Enchantress in the uh, three position. Has been Eknart on the Enchantress before, and now I wonder if it's Eknart on the Lich. Potentially James on the Earthshaker Enchantress three. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Fourth pick to come here from Khan. Got some lockdown here. Not some. They've got a lot of lockdown here. With the Shadow Demon Disruption, the Hoof Stomp, as well as the Magic Missile. They'll go into the Ursa. So from what we used to say, or we used to see, excuse me, was... Uh, Ursa phase boots Abyssal Blade when he was popular a couple months back. Ten seconds remaining. I wonder if it's still the same way. Five seconds remaining. Or if that's the way that they're gonna try and go with this. For Empire, I hope it looks like they need their mid and their safe laner still. Storm didn't really work out for them last time. I don't really suggest the TA either. I think they have more than enough lockdown and enough to deal with the TA here. Be quite the tough game for him. Radiant team back. And they go Swark on Empire Hope. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So Puck gets banned by Khan. Which is a bit of a surprise. Although they have the final pick, not the first pick here in the final phase. So maybe thinking that they didn't that they weren't gonna get it and if they weren't gonna get it, they don't want to be up against it because you know this lineup doesn't really want to be chained down and a dream coil could really kill the initiation here from Khan. You get a Dream Coil out on the Ursa and the Centaur, and all of a sudden, you know, you use that Stampede and you're right into a Dream Coil, you're not really able to catch up to this Team Empire Hope team as they try to disengage. Team pick. So now they ban the Huskar with no AA available to deal with that. And now TA gets picked up, but... I worry about what Lightless is going to be able to do with this TA. And yeah, we I know we saw Lightless destroy me the first game with TA, but this seems like a more than capable lineup of dealing with the Templar Assassin this time around. Five seconds remaining. So, final pick here for Khan. They went Marana in the first game mid, and then Invoker in the second game. They'll go to the Viper. This, to me, feels like a game that Khan should win, and they go with the uh, three Enchantress. So they do switch it up. Eknark goes on the Witch, James on the Earthshaker, Tatake on the Slark, Lightless on the Templar Assassin. Pubber on the 5 position, Venge, 4, Yamich, Shadow Demon, which he played really well in the previous game, as did Cheshire Cat on the Centaur, War Runner, and then Naive on the Ursa, leaving Arrow for the Viper.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So, Khan winning game two, Empire Hope winning game one. Definitely feel like this game is uh, favored for Khan with this lineup. I'm wondering to see if Versa is going to go into the phase boots Abyssal Blade straight up like that. Again, that used to be what we saw with the uh, Ursa back a couple months ago, but is it going to be the same or is he going to go something different? Say phase boots potentially into a Diffusal Blade. Because it seems like every position one is just benefiting and picking up Diffusal Blade at this moment in time. Pause again. Stay f there we go. Thank you. So I know once again, Naive gonna go bottom here with Yamich. That means they'll throw Cheshire Cat and Pubber together. Uh, Shadow Demon. Centaur lane did work out really well for them, and I think through the mid game could be very beneficial. And uh, you know, at really making an initiation here for the side of Khan, you disrupt into a hoof stomp, or uh, we'll see again where the Ursa is planning on going with this. But you start with that kind of lockdown. You've also got magic missile to work with. You don't even need to, you know the disruption as well as the hoof stomp. You can just start off with a magic missile. And then a hoof stomp a little later on. But for right now, it's the minus armor of the Wave of Terror. Now Cheshire Cat in a interesting spot. James trying to catch up and uh, body block. Potentially throw a fissure out if need be. He's surviving for now and pulling four heroes his direction. I'll end up being first blood here for the side of Empire Hope. Didn't exactly drag them long enough for that to turn into uh, more than two bounty runes uh, in their favor. And it might actually be less than that. Body blocks in and they will end up getting the bounty rune here. Two there for Empire Hope. Uh, only one for Khan. They actually didn't even get this one here. Ragnar was able to pick that one up. This is an offlane Enchantress this time around. We'll see it differently than the position 5 Enchantress. We'll have to see how Naive does on this or so what the build is going to be for him here. And then over towards top once again, you know, you've got Cheshire Cat with Pubber. Pubber was playing the Wisp in the previous game and uh, this time will be on the 5 position Venge. Got the Shadow Demon with Shadow Poison to throw here at Mastery. He went level 1 into the Enchant. And certainly a combination that they can work with here on Khan, given the right circumstances, where you could see a disruption at level 2 for Yamich into a jump with Urshock. So Mastery's going to have to be careful. Meanwhile, over mid, Arrow getting hit up hard again. This is a little bit of a repeat here from game 1. Taking some heavy shots with the Cyblades. And he's only got a shared Tango to work with. Arrow comes over, needs to position himself the right way. Now he picks up Corrosive Skin with some shots here at Lightless without that refraction. Making the TA a little bit more hesitant. About just trying to man up. James is here bottom. They don't have the Shadow Demon nearby. They will end up getting the Fissure out, but 
or shock. Do not flip over it in the judges score. 10, 10, and 5. Over top, Tataka gets the kill on the Cheshire Cat. A complete turnaround from the previous game on that. As he had been completely put out of lane in, the, uh, in game attack. two. This Bloodseeker wasn't able to find anything. And the Centaur was just dominating. But Arrow now getting run down by Lightless. We'll start to throw a couple poison attacks his way. Now on the low ground is Lightless still continuing to run. And will do so successfully. Kerr is coming in with a salve. So show our Arrow to back off and salve up. Disruption in on the Mastery. Gets another stack of Shadow Poison. That'll be enough to get the kill. This opens up the lane here for Naive a bit. Deny on one of those range creeps. Yamich gets the other one, so... Naive missing both of those. For right now, let's see if Cheshire Cat can kind of... Hold on, and now they've got the stun. Hoofstomp comes in. Cheshire Cat, no double edge, but they've got the damage there to get the kill there on Eknart. Good pick off going the way of Khan. Take realizes he needs to leave, and they've got the wave of terror with the early minus three armor, and that onto the Lich. You know, zero armor. Nothing to play with. So Cheshire Cat. And Bubba are able to easily rip through that Lich and find himself struggling without armor. One stack of the Shadow Poison. Again, Mastery needs to be careful. Looks over at the Earthshaker. They might even just turn on him. Got the Totem to get the stun on the both. Now the Fissure follows it up. Yamich trying to position himself the right way. Three stacks of Shadow Poison. The Slow comes out with the Enchant on a Naive. The Disruption is through. James taking a lot of damage and won't get hit by that fifth stack. An impetus shot sends Yamich back. And this four stack will pop, but not do a lot of damage over to the Earthshaker. He's able to keep himself nearby. Venge. Looking over his lightless. Three in the Refraction, two in the Cyblades. Viper's got himself an open lane for a moment. He's sitting level five as well. And that is in front. A bit of experience ahead of uh, Lightless. Cover drops down a ward. Spots Lightless coming over. A little wave of terror action. Taking a lot of damage from these Ancients. He needs to get out of Dodge I'll real scan. quick. But thinks about walking back up and into the totem he's just trying to get the bounty rune and well, without fissure he's able to secure it he goes the opposite way of yamich because the enchantress is here pubber's still on the run enchantress comes over does have an impetus shot to throw survives now gets the magic missile can he get out of this one a little melee range goes around the trees but won't survive with the damage coming through from the totem Five stacks of Shadow Poison, make it a six, and Mastery gets cleaned up. So it's a good trade there with the Bounty Rune and a three position kill here for Khan. Opening up more space for Naive as well. He didn't come over to try and get any of those kills. He allowed his supports just handle it himself. So now Arrow does have Viper Strike, Eknar comes over. Doesn't have the Frost Shield to place on himself anymore, so might want to be careful if uh, a Viper Strike does come in. Could be in trouble. Treads first here for the Viper. You take a look over the Ursa. He's going into the Wand, has the Orb as well as a Buckler. With, I believe, Boots on the way, yes. Look at this. Fissure actually only hits on the Venge. And now Yamich taking some damage, but they've got the Earth Shock, two stacks of Shadow Poison, and Lich taking a lot of damage. He'll end up low and dead. Arrow gets the kill over in the mid lane, and then we take a look back over bottom where both the Earth Shaker and the Enchantress disengage. All the while, Tataka continuing a free farm, TA within the jungle. So if we switch this over to the net worth, 
It will show that TA is only slightly ahead of the Viper for now. Radiant's top tower is under attack. So Arrow works a stack for himself. Centaur. Caught past this tier 2 tower. And giving free permanent agility over to this Sark. That's the second time he's died to the Sark. Naive now going in to uh, Treads. See what Arrow's option is. Now that he's picked up his Treads, it will be the standard Desolator for the TA. Then should be the Blink Dagger into a BKB. Sark, Wand, probably Diffusal afterwards. Again, I'm wondering, it's not going to be the Phase Abyssal for Ursa. So he's going into the Treads. We could see Diffusal come in after that. Three stack there for the TA. Gonna wanna try and pressure this. Don't wanna just give this up to the Templar Assassin. Lightless can get a big jump in uh, economy here. Meanwhile, bottom mastery getting chased up pretty hard. Now you're doing a lot of damage. The salve comes off, but ends up getting well taken out very quickly. And I think it's a kill there on the mastery also over mid. They take out Jaint. Cheshire Cat comes over. Tatake might want to be careful. He'll Dark Pack. Pounce away. And they'll lose the Tier 1 tower. All while TA is trying to take this stack. They have a ward on this. And they should probably shift over. They're right here over mid. And at the end of the day, they choose not to. So Slark through the jungle and off his lane for a moment, going into the Diffusal Blade. We've got Ursa who will go into the Abyssal, so it's not going to be the Phase Abyssal, it'll be Treads Abyssal. Which I think is fine as Pubber TP attempt. Oops, knows the totem is coming, knows he's dead, gives up, and lets himself die. Naive continuing a free farm though, so this could be potentially dangerous for the side of Empire Hope. Yamich taking over this outpost. Now they've got control of Bolt. They can just hold these for another 15 seconds or so. It should be enough where they don't get the timing on it. Eknor looks to get it, but he'll be pulled off of it. Now 10 seconds to get this. Aim tries to grab it. They've got the Sark coming over and a disconnect from the Venge and a pause coming in just as he's getting ganked. Interesting pause. Sitting here 6-5 to five in favor of Khan for the moment while we wait for Venge to come back. So as we connect it to the game, we should be good to go in just a second. We'll see uh, if Cheshire Cat can survive this. Here we are, ready to go. And Fissure comes in. Cheshire Cat getting low. The trap is through. They'll get the kill on the Cheshire Cat. Or will they stampede? But can't escape. They will end up getting both outposts. And it will finally be taken back by Empire Hope. They do get the kill there on a Cheshire Cat for the third time. So Ark gets credit for it. And he takes the permanent agility. It'll be Dragonlance early for the Viper, then into a Maelstrom Hurricane Pike. Ursa, like we saw, is going for the Abyssal Blade. 
the off lane enchantress for staff first and then it's uh deso bkb no blink dagger for the ta so Take thought about tp'ing over ends up getting that tp stopped as mastery taken out easily by naive again he's getting close to this basher it's gonna be that abyssal rush and we'll see how it works out for naive i think with that earth shock and a jump into an abyssal it could be a problem they'll have a lot of lockdown to work with they've got themselves the magic missile the dark pet comes in as well as the shadow dance from tatake they want to continue to go for this if yamich can find him with a disruption which i think maybe no, it was on cooldown, but it wasn't. He just didn't have the reach there to get him. So Arrow gonna pressure this top tier one with the help of the you know everybody but naive. They'll pull the creep wave over, keep their creeps under the tower as well as this catapult. Should be able to set up to get it. Catapult, Arrow taken off by Arrow. Works out well to get this tower. And there it is. Dyer's top tower has fallen. So they grab the outpost back. Naive. He's over bottom. Coming in to maybe put some pressure on him. They'll bring a third hero down here. No rotations coming in from the side of Khan just yet. They're going to leave him out to dry for the moment. But then, as I say that, Cheshire Cat comes around. They've got the Fissure that hits on the Cheshire Cat as well as Naive. And now Mastery easily killed without the rest of his team to help. They threw the Fissure out there, but they were able to do nothing with it. Tatake now, he needs to get out of here. As the Basher is finally picked up for the Ursa. And it's on its way. Coming in via UPS. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. So still working on this Diffusal Blade, just 600 gold away from it. TA, meanwhile, does have that Desolator going into the BKB. But you've got that Basher available for the Ursa, and now trying to finish off the Abyssal Blade in full. They'll come over towards Roche, they'll try to take an easy one, get the Aegis into his hands, and not really be scared of these next coming minutes. They're playing a high pace lineup for the moment, and it's working. The scan comes in from Empire Hope. The question is, can they really do anything about this? They do have Echo Slam. They just don't have a way to really get in to this choke point to get a good Echo Slam down. So even him rotating over is not really going to work out too well. And they just don't rotate. They can see this first Aegis. First strike. Disruption. Enchantress again broken. So they do not care about untouchable when it becomes a thing. Just like fetch. Look over towards the centaur, but I don't really know if this is uh, the bait you want to be taking. Got Tatake continuing to farm for free over bottom with that Abusal on its way. They're cutting creeps over in the top lane, and they're going to get these creeps onto the tier 2 tower. Might even be able to take the tower without a rotation from Empire Hope. Again, you got to wonder with the Aegis in the hands of the Ursa if they really want to take this fight. They finally have the Diffusal out. Viper's got his Dragon Lance, and now they're working to get this Maelstrom out. Disruption comes through. Stampede is used. Can they turn this? They've got the pounce away. Tatake getting hit up by some illusion, so he needs to back off. They try to move forward, and instead, they get sent back by the side of Khan. That did cost them Stampede as well as the Demonic Purge. But I think they're okay with that, continuing to put pressure here onto the Tier 2 tower top. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiance Courier has been killed. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower. Shadow poison on the Earth Shaker. He'll take that bounty rune away. He's looking for an Radiance area to just TP out to, attack. and doesn't look like Connor gonna give much chase. We get the tier two tower over top. Empire hope they come away with three bounties. Dyer's top tower is under attack. 
trying to clean up some creeps. They've also got the ward place down. That came in from Eknarth. They've got some vision on the opposite end of the river, but well, Khan aren't playing there right now, so they're safe for the moment. 1,200 gold away until we get ourselves this Abyssal Blade out onto this Ursa. And we'll probably see them jump forward. BKB being built here for the Templar Assassin instead of the Blink Dagger we normally see. Enchantress in his three position still going for the Four Staff, but well behind the Centaur who's 1,700 gold ahead. He's about to have his Blink Dagger. So Cheshire Cat will have that initiation with the Blink as well as the Hoof Stop. They can start it off maybe with a Disruption and then get the Centaur in. They also have quite the gap close with the abyssal blade as well as the earth shock here from the ursa and then fighting from a distance will be the viper who's 100 gold away from getting himself this maelstrom the thing right now is the fact that the ta is leading the charge in net worth slark 1100 gold behind the ursa as tatake as much as he's had the open space has come over a couple times to try and skirmish with khan and has been forced to just run Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Stampede gets used. As we look inside the river, Eknar with the TP away from Arrow. Ooh, aftershocks. Not certain. I'm not certain Shadow Demon intended to disrupt himself. Hoof stomp. Cheshire Cat finds the Earth Shaker and doesn't do much more than that. Now behind Naive with the Diffusal Blade, they'll look over at the Ursa. Ursa has the Abyssal Blade, so you need to be careful on this Slark. He doesn't have a lot of mana, though. With that Diffusal Blade, it would make it hard for him to move forward. And he was also slowed, so Slark takes that opportunity to just leave. Ward spots Cheshire Cat as well as Arrow continuing to work on these jungle camps. Take a look over now as Slark continuing to get chased. Naive, Abyssal Blade on cooldown. He'll use that wand into the Shadow Dance TP for Slark. So he gets out of this once again, gets disrupted in his farm. He starts to fall behind now Arrow, who was farming the entire time. Slark was trying to come over and fight with this Ursa. Sark with the Abyssal, the damage. Can he get a bash? One more shot. He'll finally find the Sark without the Shadow Dance, and that's a big kill to get. Take did for 40 seconds. The jump there from Naive. Seemingly very easy. He just ends up being reclaimed. They work on this tier 2 tower. Naive going to cut through it as well as Arrow. Should be able to get it uncontested. James, he's been sitting here trying to get a Blink Dagger to find the... I mean, trying to find the $15,000 Echo Slam. He has not really felt like he's done much of anything in this game. And he has yet to throw an Echo Slam. It... We'll see if even with this Blink Dagger, with the right positioning, if he can get there with an Echo, then will it be enough? So they'll smoke up, they'll try for it, they'll try to surprise them with this fresh Blink. They're not exactly all together, maybe if they could get the kill on the Ursa it ends up being worth it, but he's over towards top, Scan comes in. Start to go the other way. Smoke ends up from Khan. Roche not available. They'll head up towards top. They're not going to find anybody. They're on opposite sides of the map. But they start to come back down towards the mid lane. As they did have TA show herself for just a moment. Naive moving forward. Trying to cut the gap. They've got the Stampede. They'll get the Abyssal Blade. That is a long jump. BKB is going to be pop, but it doesn't look like it's going to be worth anything. They'll get the kill there on a light list. They'll take out the TA. That's exactly what they would have liked here with that smoke. And they are successful in finding him. I mean, with that, the team smoked up and kind of split up here for Empire Hope, leaving the TA to go and get popped. 
the abyssal blade jump is way too far. Now they're onto the high ground. Oh. Reading and losing couriers, but I'm not certain they really care about this when they've got the TA and the Enchantress dead. Fissure comes in, they'll also glyph. Khan, they'll clean up some creeps. They won't have any of their own coming in. <laughs> but, uh, was it worth going for that? Almost not worth it. So it does end up being that Abyssal Blade rush from Naive that, quite honestly, feels like has put them over the edge at the moment. They're only up a thousand net worth, but it certainly feels like, for right now, Khan is the stronger team. We're yet to see a really big five-on-five -five engagement. It's been mostly pickoffs to this point, or two and three v three. So, you know, we'll see uh, how, in fact. To deal with this once this does end up becoming a five on five again looking for the opportunity to show itself to get themselves an echo slam now you've got the hurricane pike on the viper he's going into a heaven's halberd afterwards centaur he's waiting for that courier to come back so he can get himself a pipe just our cat trying to lead the way there but ends up like a little bit short Still, it feels like there's a lot lacking here from Empire Hope. And I feel like the net worth is a little bit deceiving. You're obviously looking for the BKB here on multiple heroes, but we'll see if that even ends up being enough. He gets hit up by the poison attack. They get the Diffusal Blade out here onto the Ursa. Now he'll use that ult. He'll try to leave. Meldstrike comes in, but there's no way to chase him with the Stampede being used. Chain Frost already came out, so they've used one of the big team fight skills already. The BKB's going to be popped. They also got the Echo Sun. They get the Kona Pubber as well as Arrow completely taken out of the fight. Now they look for Cheshire Cat. It does work out in their favor. The Echo Slam ends up working, and the 5v5 favors Empire Hope at that moment. Blink into the level 2 Echo, and with the BKBs getting used, and heroes grouping up for Khan. And they just blew Arrow and, and this Venge out of the water. And you've got Cheshire Cat by himself. He fought back for this. He needs to be very careful, but here comes Naive looking over at Master. He's on the other side of the fissure. Now they look over as Tatake chasing Cheshire Cat to try and get the kill after he just fought back. He's going to be dead for 68 seconds with no buyback. They got the kill into the Shadow Demon. Yamich is out of this one. But the BKB being caught by Naive. But the damage is way too much for him with four heroes around here. They've got the minus armor on a lightless as well as the swap to get him out of harm's way. But they've got the pounce that leeches up on a Naive. The bash comes through. Is it going to be enough damage here for Empire? Hope it will be. But Arrow from the high ground looking over at Lightless. It's a triple kill here for Chitake. Continuing to move on forward. Looking for Pubber. BKB is popped by Chitake. Arrow nearby. Ultra kill comes in. Now he's looking for the full Rampage. He's got everybody around for the side of the Dire. They've got themselves not the Rampage as Lightless takes the last kill. But it's a full team white plus one here for Empire. So all of a sudden... The doubt gets pushed back in my face as Empire. Well, they come away ahead. Arms 
for the dead. Somehow, after that echo, it feels like everything just kind of fell apart here for Khan. Be playing their hand a little bit too casually. They bought back immediately with the centaur, and from there, I, I mean, he ends up dead uh, so quickly back into that fight and dead. So, Enchantress looking for the Hex. Fissure hits, Melt Strikes there. Cheshire Cat on the run. Swap comes in, but it's not going to matter. Lightless gets the kill. They also look over at the Venge. They've got the leash out on Pubber. Melt Strike comes in. There's another. All of a sudden, out of the dark skies, they have ripped through a 9,000 net worth lead just absolutely out of nowhere. And it was that one good team fight, the Echo Slam that worked. And I think, honestly, waiting for the Echo Slam that long might have really benefited them. There's the level 2 Echo, waited for the perfect moment. And I guess, in a way, he did get the $15,000 Echo Slam on that one. Not even going for the Blink Dagger, instead goes to the Hurricane Pike. Paladin Sword picked up for Mastery. Might give this over to Tatake, and that looks to be the plan. Is she just drops it. Smoke play coming in from Khan. They've got Viper by himself over bottom. James, though, with the Shadow Amulet, staying invis on top of the stairs. Now they'll start to wrap around. They've got a ward down inside their own jungle by the side of the mid lane. But now, Hoof Stomp, Double Edge comes out on the Enchantress. They'll try to TP away, but the Abyssal Blade ends up getting used, so they'll take out Mastery. On the other side of this fight, though, is James, ready with another Echo Slam. If they group up, it, this could just be the game. If they take a really good Echo fight, he blinks away, so he's not going to be able to position himself the right way, and it looks like Empire Hope are going to disengage anyway. Through forest shade. So James still sitting here over towards bottom as Khan continuing to wrap. Got the Mindbreaker picked up. We'll send back an item to hold on to the Mindbreaker going into the Desolator. I finished here for the TA. And all of a sudden, you know, you lose those two fights here for Khan, and it feels like they kind of feel lost. We'll try to fight. TA gets spotted. Blink, though. They'll go for the Lich. Instead, the BKB's going to be popped. They'll get the Abyss Blade out onto the Lich. I don't know if that's going to be your target. Chain Frost bouncing around, doing a lot of damage, going back and forth. The BKB is going to be Popeye and Eve. Now they look over the Centaur. They've got the swap. Arrow gets out of there, but now they'll take out Hubber. They look over as they're trying to get the kill with the Viper Strike out on the Lightless. They might have the damage. They do. They take out the Aegis out of the hands of the TA, but Mastery doing a lot of damage onto this Viper. Viper trying to man fight this one. He's got the Disruption coming in from the Amage. They'll get the kill on Naive. So now without the Ursa, they need to get out of this. Essence Ring. Pop by Mastery moving forward. Looking for Arrow. They get the kill on the Yamage. They'll take out four. They'll look for five. They will make it a fifth. They will make it another team wipe. And Empire Hope come out ahead and victorious once again and I believe yeah there's the GG call coming in from Khan Empire Hope pulling back real fast with the 2-0 or the 2-1 excuse me so things were looking good here for Khan and then Waited on that level 2 Echo Slam, found the perfect moment to throw it. I, they wiped out the Viper and the Venge immediately off that Echo Slam, and without Viper, I mean, the fight fell apart, and they were able to take advantage. Tatake ends up 10-1-4, and four, Lightless 6-1-10. and 10. I mean, look at this, just the bottom falls out of this graph, and a 2-1 victory series here for Team Empire Hope. So that's it here today for Sigil League, Sigil Pro League.
I think uh, Serial Pro League is back on tomorrow. I'm your caster, Bcop, at Bcop92 on Twitter. Follow me to know when I'm casting. That's twitter.com slash Bcop92. I know, I know not many of you come over after I say this, but why not? Hope you guys, see you guys later, and uh, appreciate you guys coming to watch, and we'll be back tomorrow. So stay right there, enjoy the rest of your day, don't get sick, wash your hands, stay healthy, and uh, see you guys later.